Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL, and welcome to the QTH. I'm actually not in the field for this video. I decided to make this really short video because I was doing something I just wanted to share it. Um, so I grabbed my camera and decided to, to pull it up here and kind of talk about it a little bit because this is something I like to do as a part of kind of my overall annual workflow with radio stuff. And I think it's actually something that everybody should do. Um, I have, as many of you know, I've got a lot of QRP radios and QRP radios are notorious for having multi-function buttons, right? So the KH1 that I have out here, in fact, this is the one I've been looking at today. I uh, have the manual here to one side and I've got the KH1 here hooked up to a dummy load, of course, so that I can key and not worry about sending RF and not worry about hurting the radio or something. And what I do is, even though I use the KH1 a lot, like it's probably one of the radios I use more than any other right now, it and the KX2 are two of the sort of the radios I, I turn to a lot here recently because I've been traveling and doing things where I want a small, portable, all-in-one radio. But as much as I use it, the other day I was in the field and I couldn't remember how to switch between message memory banks. And so I kind of made a note of it and on a day like today, where right now it's 14 degrees outside and blowing some snow, um, I decided to come inside and do a little radio things inside. Just this, like I said, annual workflow maintenance stuff that I do. And start reminding myself how to do some of these things on the KH-1. When I was a beta tester or a, in the testing group with KH-1, still am. And because of that, you know, I know this radio really thoroughly. I've been through every function that it does pretty much, but it doesn't remember, it doesn't mean that I remember it um, if I haven't used it in a while. And frankly, since I have, you know, a KH-1, I also have the KX, the KX-3 over here. Um, and I have a KX-2. I just, get confused sometimes where some of the uh, functions are. And so here with the KH1, for example, I was trying to remember how to go through the message memory banks and I would click on message and I would see it and it has memory one, two, and three. And I thought, how do I get to four, five, and six? Well, I referenced it in the manual and found out that you just press the record and then the GRP shows up and that's the function that you use to move it to um, memories four, five, and six. And now I can remember that. I remember how that uh, goes and uh, it's not a problem at all to um, then know how to do your uh, message memories. But I'm not gonna record right now. Anyway, the I think it's an important thing to kind of go through your radios and um, remember how to do functions that you like to use in the field. But more important than that, and something that I really in, actually enjoy doing, is I and I started doing this with the KH1 to refresh my memory, but. I do this with the KX2, the KX3, um, I do it especially with the MTR3B, uh, this LCD version. I just recently got the new Kurahi model and I know that I'm probably going to get a little confused about the different functions between them, but I have the 3 and I have the 5 and not everything's the same. Uh, with these, not everything's the same. So I try to go through and remember how to use like say message memories on here. And it has a different way of getting into the menu system. The Ellicraft way here with the KH1 is pretty direct, usually either press or long press a button. But on, you know, on the mountain topper, you press and hold until the memory, it cycles through the different uh, feature uh, features during the feature list. And sometimes I forget how to do those, how to enter things. And what's been frustrating before is I've, I've been in the field with the MTR3B and forgotten how to even get into message memories because it had been a few months since I'd used it. And so I try to keep these things fresh in my mind. I had a pilot friend tell me once that uh, when he was in the RAF that uh, they would do hypoxia training. And you're, you're going to think, what is Thomas talking about? This has nothing to do with radios, but just hang in there with me for a second. He said that they would do hypoxia training where they would like slowly reduce the oxygen and people would get that sensation of hypoxia, you know, all the pilots would, and they would have to be doing tasks like 
little small tests and tasks to show how it affects your um, your uh, you know acuity, your your ability to do things, your dexterity, your ability to reason, all those things. These are all affected by hypoxia. And the problem is, especially I think with uh, you know fighter pilots, which he was. Uh, you know, the sometimes you would lose oxygen or start to lose oxygen in the cockpit. And if it was your first time of that happening, or even your second time, maybe you might not recognize the symptoms. But by being tested all the time and put in this chamber where they uh, put you through a hypoxia test, your body starts to understand and it moves it from what he called um I think I got this right from like electrical memory, like synapses firing to some more like a chemical memory that stays with you over the long term. And I think in my own way, that's what I, that's the reason I like to try to go back and review my radios. It's one of the reasons I also like to cycle my radios when I'm going out and doing an activation. But even if you only have one radio, I'm a firm believer that on occasion you pull out the manual like even even this radio, the QCX Mini, which is a pretty simple radio in, in a lot of respects, I've gotten to the field and couldn't remember how to do things on this radio before. Uh, if you have a radio, get out the manual and go through the whole thing, like literally read it from cover to cover. It doesn't mean that every single section you have to read it, but go through it cover to cover. Manuals in, amateur, in the amateur radio world, at least most of the major manufacturers have really good manuals. And a lot of companies like um, you know QRP Labs have really good manuals. So go through the manual and get to know the radio really well so that uh, you can refresh your memory and you may even learn new things that you can do uh, another thing that I'm going to be doing here really soon with my KX2 is um, do a little PSK31 natively where I just plug a key into it and I natively send um, PSK31. I can do the same thing on the KX3, by the way. Both of those radios do this. And I think it's such a cool feature. But I don't use it like hardly ever. I think the last time I used it was probably three or four years ago, something like that. And I'm not very good, if I'm being honest, about switching between CW, I can do CW and single sideband because I do this all the time. I switch between those two modes, but getting it into the proper digital modes for like reading, um, you know, a digital signal and it showing up on the display and all that, Sometimes I get a little confused with that in the field, and I want to practice uh, that a little bit. So I'll be getting out my KX2 manual. I'll have my KX2 sitting here with uh, the dummy load on. Thank you, VE6LK, for this dummy load. I've used this thing so much. It's so much better than my other dummy loads. I, I'll put the dummy load on, and I'll test, and I'll play with it and kind of get to know it. So whenever you have one of these days like today where you maybe you don't want to be out in the field, maybe the weather's bad, maybe the timing's bad, maybe it's late at night or early in the morning, but you want to do something radio related, I would encourage you to pick up your radio and pick up your manual and just do a really deep dive, a really thorough deep dive and um, either refresh your memory or learn something new, like make it a challenge to learn some new feature that your radio has or shortcuts, uh, maybe the, how to program, um, you know, they, there are buttons here on a lot of Elecraft radios and Yezus and Icoms where you they've got multifunction buttons. You can you can actually program what you want that button to do, uh, a user defined button. Those are wonderful uh, because you can really customize your radio by using those. So don't just get the radio, hop on the air and ignore the manual. Take out the manual and learn things. <laughs> that is my message for the day. And uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them here in the comment section. I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, but otherwise, take care, everyone. Until next time, seven twos.